Good morning. <clears throat> it is Friday, June 14th. 14th? Yes, I believe. It's going to be a nice day out. The weather's nice. It doesn't look like any rain, which is great. We've had a lot of rain this week. Rain's great for the garden and everything, but you know, it is nice to get out in the sunshine. Um, what are my plans for today? I don't know. I'm wearing my black rainbow dress. I've got my rainbow pants on too. My legs get cold, and, but I don't know if I'm gonna keep wearing this all day because it looks a little silly. These pants are really baggy. I might actually just take the pants off and just wear the dress because the dress is like past my knees anyway. Or maybe I'll switch out the dress for my rainbow top, which is also black and rainbow. I couldn't decide. So anyway, um, today is, I don't know, I don't really have a lot of plans for today. Uh, working on some more books. I, um, so far this month, I've done five new ones. I just, uh, sent off two that I finished yesterday. Um, I did the editing and stuff this morning and submitted it to Amazon. Um, I've got several more in the works. My hope is that maybe by the end of the, this month or the next that I will get to 200 200 books the cap won't find. This is almost gone. I'm almost out of this. Now I'm going to have to find another color correcting primer. I do have one I got from Timo, which will be fine, but it's like a green base instead of blue, and I think I like the blue base better. But we'll see. Unfortunately, this one can't be bought anymore. It's, um, from the Fortnite collection by Makeup Revolution. Once it's gone, it's gone. Because this, I bought this on clearance last, last June. So like a year ago. And I've used it almost every day ever since. So it did last a long time. But the Fortnite collection is not something you can buy anymore. Because it, it's long gone. I don't know yet what colors I'm doing. I don't want to do anything that's going to stain my eyelids because tomorrow I have to do like really natural makeup for our photo shoot um, with my niece and her daughters. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to do like some family shots first and then I'm going to take the kids to go play and uh, then she's going to do like a some pictures just with her fiance and she she does photo shoots fairly frequently she's a model and she's so good at it you guys oh. anyway um got more paperwork I gotta help Robbie with. Basically, the recruiting officer isn't very familiar with homeschooling. And he's like, well, so how does that work? Do you have to submit something in order to get permission to graduate? No, that's not how it works. We graduate the kids when they finish the program we use. And he's like, well, is it a program from the state? Well, no, not in Minnesota. We don't have to do that. And it's not one specific program that I use. I use several. And um, he's like, well, well, how does that work? And so I'm trying to explain it to him. And he's like, um, not really getting it. And then I said, well, you know, homeschooling is really common these days. You, you should really educate yourself on this. And he goes, well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, especially because my wife homeschools our daughter. You guys. He, he and his wife are homeschooling their own daughter, and he has no idea how it works. 
I was like, um, you should probably know that then. He wasn't mean or anything. He was just clueless. And <laughs> um, I'm like, well, you know, this is kind of something that's important for you to know, especially if you're homeschooling your own child and you're going to run across this again because there's, you know, there's a lot of people that homeschool and then want to go into the military. So what I did is I contacted Homeschool Legal Defense because, you know, they're the ones that often handle this stuff and I have a membership with them and um, asked I gave him gave them this guy's phone number because he asked me to to do that and they're gonna contact the, him sometime next week and in the meantime I sent him links for homeschool legal defense to show what the homeschool laws are and it's it's really dumb because like a lot of people think that oh well public school it's the state that gives you permission to graduate and so well doesn't the state have to sign off on something it depends on your state some states yes some states you have to submit a specific exam or something he's like well can you send me all of the grade work and everything and i'm like no actually we don't have to do that because we're only required to submit certain things like we're required to take standardized tests, but we're not required to submit them. And my oldest uh, was over 18 when he he decided to, because he went to the public school for high school. That was his choice, but he didn't want to finish in public school. So he, um, he wanted me to homeschool him for his last year. And... Uh, So he, he was already over 18, so we didn't have to do the standardized test, so I didn't make him do it. Because honestly, the standardized tests are stupid, and I have to pay for them, and they don't really show, you know, how smart a kid is or isn't. It's just a lot of, a lot of busy work. And so I didn't make him do it, because I didn't have to. Homeschool Legal Defense said if you're over 18, you don't have to. So I didn't. And um, the, those tests aren't required for graduating anyway. And he's like, well, do, do you have any like submissions or anything? And I'm like, no, because we don't have to do that. I'm not, I'm not gonna do extra paperwork that isn't, you know, required. Um, and he's like, well, how do you prove? I said, well, you have the proof right there. You have the proof right there. Um, I homeschooled them. They completed our homeschool program as required by the state. We submitted all relevant information. You already have the information that you need. And he's like, well, I don't know because I think I need more than this. And I'm like, well, then you need to talk to somebody else that knows because this is supposed to be your job, you know. But anyway, uh, that'll get sorted out because Homeschool Legal Defense will do that. That's what they do. Um, and hopefully in the future, that recruiting officer will understand how it works because especially BNC's homeschooling his own kid, he should know how it works. <laughs> I was just astonished by that. Like, I was like, wait, so you're, you and your wife are homeschooling, but you don't know anything about it. He's like, yeah, pretty much she handles all that. And what I was thinking there was like, oh my gosh, that is a very unbalanced relationship, and honestly, she's probably going to end up very bitter about it. Because when, when you're, when you're married, but you're still single parenting, that's tough, guys. When you're the default parent, and you're the only one taking care of the kids' needs, that absolutely 
breeds resentment. And it's like, it's one of those things that like, you can try and try and try to get through to the other parent about how hard this is. And they're like, nope, not my job because I have an income and I'm not dealing with this. So it's on you. And then when they finally, when you're, when you're past the stage that you need all that help and didn't get it. And then they're like, oh, I didn't realize. And now they just want you to just forgive them as if it never happened. And I tell you what, nine times out of 10, that's why women leave their marriages is because they felt like they've had to go it alone the whole time. And then it gets to the point where, no, they don't need that extra help anymore. It's already done. But their partner wasn't partnering when they needed them to. So they're just no longer invested in the relationship because their needs were not met. And then of course the other partner feels totally blindsided, acts like they don't know where that's coming from. And <clears throat> oh, it just came out of left field. I don't understand why she left, you know, that sort of thing. And it's like, I definitely see that recruiter's relationship heading in that direction if he doesn't figure it out. It's like, there's so many men that believe that their only responsibility to the family is to have a paycheck, and this is whether or not the woman is working outside the home or a homemaker. And they were just like, no, I did my eight hours. I'm clocked out. That's it. Now I get to rest. You don't need time off. You don't need a break. You're just at home. You're just this. You're just doing that. It's women's work. Or maybe I'll help if you tell me what to do, but I'm only going to do this specific thing and not try to notice the things that need done. They're like, oh, no, women are just naturally better than that. No, we've had to learn, guys. We've had to learn what needs done and learn how to notice these things. It's not that we're naturally better at it. It's that we do it every day. We do it constantly. We don't need somebody to mother us along and tell us what to do, write us a list. We figure it out. And that's ultimately what women want from men in relationships. We don't want to be their mother. We don't want to have to carry the whole mental load and the whole thing we don't want that. We want a partner that's going to be a partner, not a partner that's going to be like, I don't feel like doing this, so I'm just going to leave it for her. We don't want a partner that's going to have to be told and trained just like a child. We don't want to be the only grown-ups in our relationship. And a lot of men don't get that. Some do. Some do. I know, I know, I know some really great guys that get it. My brother's definitely one of them. Um, my brother-in-law, my cousin, There's a lot of great guys that get it. I have some male friends that are great to their wives. You know, but there's a lot of guys that don't get it. A lot of them don't get it and they don't want to get it because in their mind, they got married to have somebody take care of them like a mommy. And I definitely see that in that recruiter, that he isn't really actually parenting his daughter if he's completely unaware of how homeschooling works and how what his wife is doing with their daughter on a daily basis. And it's like, oh man, I would just love to delve into that conversation with this man and show him before it's too late. But for one, it's not really my place. I did, I did say, well, you know, if you're homeschooling your own child, you should definitely be aware of that. And he's like, well, my wife takes care of that. And I'm like, you should still be aware. Not only as, as the father of a homeschooled child, but also as a recruiter. I said, I'm not trying to be rude here, sir, but it is actually your job to know this stuff, both as a father and an army recruiter. 
And he's like, oh, I mean, yeah, you're probably right. So I do actually have hope that this guy can figure it out and turn it around. Um, fortunately, I don't really have to be the one to handle that because I already submitted all the paperwork that I need to submit, the kids' diplomas, um, and their transcripts, which is all they need. If he was going to public school, that's all they would ask for. Uh, my oldest has two transcripts because he has one from the public school and one from me. And they're more confused on that one than they are on Robbie's because Robbie's is just one thing. I'm like, figure it out? Like, you guys are supposed to know this. But anyway. There's still, like, homeschooling has become a lot bigger than it used to be, but there's still a lot of prejudice in some places against homeschoolers. And primarily, it's the whole people fear what they don't understand thing. And definitely, there are people that do homeschooling wrong. Absolutely, I've seen it, where they just don't teach their kids, or they neglect their responsibilities. Homeschooling is hard. It's a dedication. It's harder on the parents than it is on the kids. Um, you also have to be willing to look for help. If your kid isn't understanding or you're not able to teach something, then, then you have to be willing to look for outside help. We had the advantage of one of my close friends um, is a certified teacher. And so that she tutored some of my kids for a while. And at one point I did send both Dylan and Robbie to a private school for almost a year. It was part-time, like I was doing school with them at home, and then I was sending them to the private school part-time uh, because I was having trouble teaching them certain things, mostly because Robbie and Dylan are both uh, dyslexic, and I needed training on how to teach them. Once we got that down, we were doing pretty good. A lot of the things that I really love about homeschooling is that we could study what the kids wanted to study sometimes. Like, I mean, we did the, we definitely did the basics, like the regular classes, math, reading, etc. But we also had a lot of leeway where we could be like, hey, you know, I'm interested in how the human body works. So today we're going to study anatomy or um hey I want to learn about cars so today we're gonna study the history of motor vehicles you know stuff like that and some of our classes were a lot like that kind of like an independent study where we just kind of we learned what the kids were wanting to learn that day and that made it a lot of fun. And each kid, like Naomi is super into snakes. She always wants to learn about snakes. So we always include something about snakes. Um, you know, we've used video games to teach um, economy and uh, how money works. We've used... Um, real life scenarios where I'll have them, I'll set a certain amount for what they can earn for chores. And then as they earn it, they have to budget their money for something that they want. And they learn about change and tax and all of that. When my boys got jobs at the grocery store, their boss told me that they were the only kids their age that knew how to count change. And I found that incredibly sad because I thought the public schools were better than that. I wanted to homeschool because I wanted to spend as much time with my kids as I can. Um, 
and I wanted to give them a good education and I wanted to make sure they didn't get bullied. I got bullied pretty severely in school and um, so did my husband. And so homeschooling was something we, we both agreed on from the very beginning that we wanted to do. Now, my husband hasn't been very involved in our homeschool. It's been, you know, me doing all of it. But um, it was something at least he, he was like not fighting me on. He was like, he's never wanted to send the kids to public school either. And, um, you know, we, we did a lot of research and stuff and made sure that we had the resources to do so. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a process. It's not easy. And the first couple of years were definitely really hard when we were trying to figure out what we were doing and how we were doing it, you know, um, And I would, I would say there's definitely a lot more resources these days for homeschooling than there was 20 years ago. Well, uh, 15 years ago when I started. Uh, we use a computer-based program for all the like core subjects and then everything else is hands-on. Um, we do a lot of hands-on, you know, like home ec, we cook and clean every day, we do projects, we do art, we do sewing, we do community involvement, we do so many things. And, um, homeschooling done right is basically you're learning all the time, but it doesn't feel like forced learning. It, you're not sitting in a classroom for eight hours a day, you're living learning. It's constant. And it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. And like the actual sit down, let's do this on the screen or do this on the paperwork is only like an hour or two a day. The rest of it is all intentional learning with everything that you do. And if you don't do that, then you do end up with kids that fall behind. You end up with kids that, you know, can't read or don't know math or whatever. But the same thing happens in public schools where kids just get passed through and passed through and passed through and they don't actually learn. In fact, my oldest who went to public school ended up being behind when I put him back in my home school um, because they went from learning stuff that was like a college level here at home to stuff that was like stuff we did in middle school um, when he went to public high school and he was like, this is so easy. And I was like, yeah, it's easy because you already learned it. Like, <laughs> you know, my, my boys, I'm not super good at math, but we have a program that teaches math and we did get a tutor for that at one point. My, <sighs> Robbie and Ronan were doing advanced math, like calculus and, and stuff like that. And when Dylan was in the public high school, he was doing pre-algebra, which we had done years before. So there's, there's a difference. And it, it depends on your school, too. Some public schools are great. I went to public school. No complaints there except for being bullied. I got a great education. Other public schools, not so much. It really just depends. But anyway, um, I've seen homeschooling done wrong. Uh, my adopted daughter Freya she was homeschooled and she could barely read when she was you know high school age um so there's definitely like a spectrum of homeschooling parents and there's lots of right ways to do it and lots of wrong ways but anyway that's my that's my thoughts for today I hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing, beautiful day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being part of my life and my world. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you for being here. If you're not already, please subscribe. There'll be a subscribe button right up here somewhere, wherever YouTube puts it. And down here, there will be a video from somewhere in my channel based on your viewing 
history. Thank you so much. I will see you soon.